sex is sex. And like you said, it's very um, carnal. It's very, you know, it's it's in us, girl. Like, I don't think there should be a fear with that. People have their needs, girl. Have your sex, but know what you're getting yourself involved in. But don't try to have sex with someone who you think is going to be bae the next day. Go into it knowing, hey, girl, I'm just trying to bust this real quick. And it is what it is. If that's the case, then yes. But if you want to build with somebody, I would say wait because that's how you filter out the for everybody type of nigga. Child, that it's don't mean really anything either. For everybody. Child, that and don't mean nothing either. That I've done met people who have been in the whole thing for six damn months, finally let the nigga hit because everything seemed right. All of a sudden, they gone still. So it, a nigga going to leave with or without having the sex. Period. Right, but I, again, it helps you learn who he is. I'm not saying fuck a nigga on the first date. Obviously, I think the trap is letting a nigga get to know you first because if you go into something with the eyes of, okay, I just want a lustful moment, you don't really have the opportunity to kind of entrance a nigga in your whole being. I feel like if you can do like two or three dates, I'll probably give you the pussy in the neck on like the third or fourth date depending on how things are going. Because I feel like at that point, there's enough time for us to soak up each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> soak, up, soak up each other's energy to see like how we vibe. And I've had situations like that too, where I've actually really vibed with a dude without having sex first and we really get to know each other. Then it becomes like this thing. We never really did anything in a relationship kind of vibe, but it, we did things in relationship parameters, if that makes sense, but we weren't actually exclusive, to, you know? Yeah. We were cool. We were like homeboys with benefits, basically. Right. Because we were just cool like that, you know? And that's that's different. Like, if you're looking for a relationship, I think it's important to, to filter these niggas out so that you save yourself from public embarrassment or just, like, getting yourself into something you can't handle. And that brings me to our next topic. Oh, about girl, I'm so sorry, but you just made me think of something. Oh my God, this is an eye-opening moment. A breakthrough, okay. bitch. I feel like Mary J. Blige. You fucking sat here and said something spoke to my spirit. Maybe that's why I love DL men. Because if the shit don't work out or if I was embarrassed, I have nothing to say about it anyway. Because I can't. Right. Mm. That was a word. You want to bring in our next topic, bitch? Since you since you bringing in the word, honey. No, y'all go ahead. I don't have my notes. I already cut the Wi-Fi off so I can have the extra power. So by the time I, <laughs> you are so superstitious. <laughs> he do crazy shit like that, James. I'm telling you, like, oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Bitch, well, what? Just... Bitch, yeah. what? <laughs> No, because when your Wi-Fi is on your devices, it actually still runs. So if you turn it off, you give a single device more power. At least that's what I was told. But go ahead. Everyone loves a guy who was social. However, does he have a thousand gay friends? or have a huge social media following consisting of mainly gay men? Join us in this discussion on what behaviors to look for from all of these hoes. I think we've all dealt with it for everybody's type of nigga. I was just talking about him. Like, oof, oof. I think we all have. I, I mean, was- okay, there's a difference though because the topic, just because he knows people, people know him. Does that necessarily make him a street whore? You could tell by the fucking energy, and I just you had to talk. Yes, you could tell. I by just the told y'all about the nigga that I met on Sunday. Because <laughs> he said he gonna watch it, so we can't even. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, uh, chocolate thunder. Matumba. Chocolate thunder. Okay. Matumba. Okay. <laughs> But I saw him and I saw all these people. You keep saying it because you know I can't edit my tune, but I'll bitch. <laughs> so I'm talking about Chocolate Thunder. Okay. Sunday. When I saw him, because we was bouncing around to, to both places, because this is a bar called OT, and then it's 3606, is like a club that's connected. So we were kind of bouncing back and forth or whatever. But every time I seen this nigga, 
it was all these people up in his face. And like I said, it goes to the energy of what they're giving. If niggas is whispering in ears and, you know, holding a, neighbor's, a nigga's back, you know, doing all like, really. hugs and, you know, all that, too much smiling and all that bullshit, you need to cut that shit short. If not, then you Well, forever. bitch, that just, go, that just shows you that you're going to experience the pleasantries that they've experienced. You, everybody should well, be that's good. on you that's not on him it's how you conduct yourself you can't blame him you know what I mean and look also you were giving that the honesty so that's why he addressed you as such I mean you were I, I, I told y'all I had to let it be known that I'm not that bitch don't come in my life like that that's not well, what we're giving. you giving off that energy I was drunk boots okay. so okay. Oh, you are. I, 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 look, we're gonna stop are, using Scorpios, those excuses. Scorpios are flirty as fuck. Like I will say that, and we do like attention. So if you giving that, I'm gonna give it back. Hold on. For, but what I wasn't giving do, thotties. I don't ever give thotties. What we can't, we need to stop doing this because we're we're getting too old now. We cannot blame stuff on alcohol anymore or our zodiac signs. Girl, please, you Jenny know what you were doing, bitch. Blame it on the yeah. juice. It's got me feeling loose. All right, Ebony from the Players Club. <laughs> Girl, we saw the we, we saw you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it ain't that type of party. <laughs> Child, you that's like saying, okay, you drunk and flirty, and then when a nigga really try to slide in, child, you have a big old problem with it. You was giving off that energy. Then again, now the girls that are going to, oh my God. Now I just okay, thought about how that. I mean, if I'm giving off that no, energy. No, no. Call, we, we may get a lot of controversy for this episode, but no, I'm going to go ahead and finish that thought because a lot of times girls do want to get too sensitive and be like, I can dress like a slut. I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. I can give off whatever signal and he still got to no, know, bitch. Read the fucking room. If you giving off, fuck me. Don't be surprised when he try to fuck you. Period. It's all in um, your move. And I'm not, hey, <laughs> I'm here for all of the things. Because if I'm giving off fuck me, that's probably what I really mean. Fuck me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Literally. Okay, so we've all, I'm sure, had niggas on Instagram that we followed or that follow us. Um, How do we feel about the amount of followers they have and the likes and comments. Does that make you think that this is a for everybody type of nigga? No. Mm -mm. Because we're content creators ourselves in a lot of ways. So all we are looking for is the likes, the comments and the followers and things of that nature. I mean... I can't get mad at a nigga because he's well known or popular. Kind of like what I said earlier. Like I don't. How you treat me is what's important. Yeah. Because again, even on a celebrity level, I know that's like you know going up there. But they have no like rappers who rap about all this shit, but they're married and have been married for like ten years or whatever. Their wife at home knows they're not really out here fucking all these hoes and doing all this shit out here in the streets. They probably were at one point or another. But, like, as you grow and become a little bit more adult and mature, like, you're not about what you say or what may be out there. How you treat me at home, who you are outside of that realm is more important to me, if that makes sense. And if you show those behaviors while you're with me, then, of course, that's a red flag and that's going to be a problem. But who you are in your social media life, we got to start, we got to stop taking people for the face value of it all because that could be all fakery fuckery and fraudulence but for me i'm not gonna lie like if i see that you got a whole lot of people in your comments or you know you got a whole lot of followers or a whole lot of attention i'm gonna automatically think well if your public shit look like this your dm must look like Something. 10 times so i'm not gonna even shoot my shot because i feel like it's gonna get lost in the sauce anyway like i'm just another dm at this point so I don't even try. You know, I still like them. I like they pics or whatever. But I just... One I thing even... that I say that I pay attention to, like, it'll be a lot of comments, but every now and then I will look at the comments. I mean, we all have, right? Just to yeah, see what we're saying. I look at the responses. 
And that will generally tell me if a motherfucker is for everybody. You think like me, bitch. You think like me, bitch. Brilliant. And then, if it's like, um, yeah, and then I, it's like for me, like since we talking, you know, since it's the kitty box and we can be transparent, I, I'm looking at how these niggas are talking about female and men. Like if you, my guy, and you know, thanks, friend. Like if you very platonic. And I'm just like, okay. If you talk to the niggas the same way you talk to the girls, or if you like, <laughs> girl, like, y'all doing too much. If a gay nigga reach out to you and you're really like cool, like I saw this one dude, and hopefully he don't see this. I mean, we cool, but I don't think he listens to the podcast. But like, he was like, your fashion sense is so dope, and I was like, okay, cool. So I went to the guy's Instagram. He he is one of us. Like he is literally, literally, and like you know, in a perfect world, they could be completely platonic and it mean absolutely nothing. But that is alarming. It's not necessarily a red flag, but it's something for me to pay attention to. Right, y'all are the girls that ain't gonna have no husband. Because you're adding to the narrative that social media destroys relationships. I'm not trying to like this nigga, though. I'm just... We can't judge people based on their social media presence. Oh, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I'm not judging him. I'm but just... That's a lot of work that y'all are doing. That's a lot of work that y'all are doing. That's not a lot of work. That's, I'm just, that's, that's, that's a lot of work. If he's, if he's popular... Let's say this dude has a million followers. You already know he probably has like 20 to... 500,000 comments. You're going to go through every single one? No. First of all, I, I'm not I'm crushing on a nigga who got 5 million followers. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm right. like, within reach. Like, maybe 50k right. and right. under. Like, within reach. And it's maybe, what, 100 comments? Girl, you can skim through those in like 30 seconds, girl. You don't take mm-hmm. long. Because right. you got to know what you're looking for. Bitch, y'all know what I'm talking okay. about. How many comments? You know what the fuck I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> I mean, I get it, but I don't want you to look and think that that's that nigga because, again, people put on fronts when they get on social media. So you could be missing out on your husband based on a thought. You know, remember we had this conversation about Mr. <laughs> Mr. Lady, Mr. After Dark Child. Yeah. You know, like sometimes you people. Wait, wait, wait. You talking about sugar girl? <laughs> no. Um. Me? Mr. Mr. Yoga. Oh, <laughs> Yoga Bay. Yoga Bay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, have y'all been to Yoga Bay's Twitter? Mm-hmm. Bitch, no. We're doing a lot. No, that's what I'm going If he doing all of that, that's being too fucking social, bitch. That is I, too. See, that's too. That's- Th- that's for everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's for everybody. That's, that's his job. Everybody. That's his job. That's what he does for a living. And that's for everybody. You, you can do it differently. You can do it yeah. differently. Girl, no man. Would you be able to take yoga man? Well, that's a woman. I can't do women. Uh, <laughs> if he was a man, I can't if, do he women, was given, huh? if he was giving Iman Shumper, if he was giving Iman Shumper to you, but did what he did. Would you be able to handle that? I'm deaf. That's why I think I relate a lot to Tiana Taylor because, like, if things can be as symbiotic as their relationship, that's perfect because you're not taking things too seriously. You're still having fun, and I think you just breathe better because I think him at as an athlete, they have like the longest real relationship. Other than other athletes that are much older than him, obviously, but. I like them. I think they're a good point of reference for this type of conversation because I'm cool with that. So you, I'm if, cool. If, if if Yoga Bay was given Iman aesthetic, like if he looked like him and was like mm-hmm. a total top, you would date him. Yeah. Okay. That makes one because bitch, <laughs> the other two. That's bullshit. Damn. Yeah, I date him. I sure would. That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. But I, another thing that I will say that I do look at sometimes, especially with new followers, is who the fuck we have in common. Yeah. And that will tell you a lot about if a nigga's for everybody as well. 
because it's been niggas that I followed and niggas that was like slid in my DM and shit. And I'll look to see who we have in common and they be following like so many people, probably, you know, a hundred people that we have in common. And then I'll like sometimes see that they're liking those pictures and shit and then they be in the comments and shit. And I'm like, uh, fuck you. I can't, I can't do Girl, it. Girl, another moment. We'll tell you about a moment like this. So let me break this down again, honey. It's a small world after all, especially if you live in the same city as each other. You're going, especially in our community, the LGBT community, it's very small. So to think that that nigga who's your potential hasn't already played around and had a night on the town on all these hoes. I we say that. Well, let me ask y'all this then. How many bodies is too many bodies? Like if a nigga say, I didn't sleep with this many people, what, what number is gonna make you be like, now bitch. I have I have no room to talk. I can't judge nobody, girl. Cause Do I, you not ask because you don't care, Jace, or because you don't want to know? I don't want to know. Because it has nothing to do with me. Like, if you and I are, are like, fucking around and, like, we're, we're on some serious shit, I don't want to know how many niggas you've been with in the past. Yeah. yeah. Don't. That makes sense. And I don't want you to I, ask, even though it's not a lie. <laughs> Even though it's not a lot, but I don't think that you should be trying to find out how many guys I slept with. Like that's gonna determine if I'm worthy enough, you know, to date you. Fuck people who change of heart dealing with that. And at one point, that was a. I was talking to a nigga and he gave me triple digits one time, and I said, "Oh, oh," and it did make me feel some type of way. But now. I completely agree with you, Jace. I feel like that's your past. It it has nothing to do with me. Like, uh, but you could have a hundred motherfucking queens. Them queens weren't me, honey. Period. Right. I was going. I to me, that it was, wasn't about. It wasn't about the competition of who was the best. I for me, this was my mindset back then when I felt that way. I don't want to be the girl walking on the sign and everybody's like, "Hey, James. Hey, James." It's exactly. just like, oh, I'm like you too. I mean, but it's the community. It's a small world after all. You are, in, without a doubt, going to walk in those spaces sometimes. And it is what it is. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. Do your thing, honey. You, you have a past. We all have a past. You're lying, bitch. Because if you was well, out at some, oh, yeah, yeah. some gay bar, bitch, and the dude that you with is every bitch is stopping out oh, hey and giving hugs and all that but you will feel a fucking type of way probably not in the moment because i have to stay face because in the in the moment i'll probably act like i don't care but bitch when we get home you're not that girl you're not that bitch. nigga and she gonna feel it too home girl at the club bro you gonna trip her you gonna put something in her drink you gonna let her know bitch don't speak to my man <laughs> bitch i'm gonna treat that whore like diamond did ronnie at the players club bitch I'm going to beat that whole ass in the bathroom, smash exactly. her face into a mirror, That's all pick I'm that saying. bitch in the stomach. I don't want to have to be beating hoes up everywhere I go. Right. Damn, I just fought at the Olive Garden. Now we at the goddamn mall. We got to fight again, bitch. But no, I think we have to... We, <laughs> Bitch, I think we have to put this, Garden. but I think we have to put things in a mature perspective, though. We can't go around here fighting people and being ratchet and it's life sex is sex girl relationships are relationships and again if you're in your hometown or if you're living in the same city for a while everyone eventually is going to know everyone especially in our community you know how we do child amen and i feel like also like the reason why i've graduated to another level of thinking is because i have fucked with a bdb who was a james and but he he carried himself in such a way that I can look at these hoes out in public and know that they knew my nigga, but they was respectful enough to give James his space and his respect. Nobody came up and said anything to James. Nobody, you know, because he sets a tone like, bitch, I'm not with you. It's over. You know that we know each other. We can know how to keep it moving. I can but respect if, that. If a girl is confident enough to hey, James, why does she feel that way? Why does she feel like she can't come up to you knowing you locked arms with somebody? So I think, again, that says something about the nigga. But I think having that kind of pressure in the moment can look at your insecurity. Even though you may not be insecure, it could add validity to the public. And I'm not going to give no bitch in the public eye an opportunity to 
Oh, I got that hoe pressed. Bitch, you don't have me pressed, <laughs> girl. No. Bitch, like oh, I said, I'll get, get that. I'll get that I'll nigga together that. privately when we get back to the crib if I really did feel some type of way. But as far as public shit, if people like you, you have passes. If a bitch is, oh, hey, how you doing? That means your relationship, if that's what it was with that person, your encounter with them was of a pleasant nature. Cool. That lets me know the kind of guy that you are then. At least you're a good enough dude to where people see you in public, they actually want to respect you and they want to wave at you instead of trying to hit you with their car because you fucked them and their homegirl at the hotel party child and took all the goddamn brown liquor when you left or after you didn't see it in these holes. It's how you speak. Hey, how you doing? I can deal with you. Hey, James, you look so good. It's been forever. Bitch, I'm going to be private, but I'm going to also be public. Oh, baby, I forgot something in the car. Let me go pee. I'm going to find that bitch car flattening all her ties and then get back to the car. Okay, so I got, a, I got a question for y'all. So, and this kind of ties in, and not just social media, but just a social guy, period. Um, how do we feel about guys that have huge groups of gay friends? Like families or? Well, that too, but just, I mean, that's, that's encompassing at all. But just like, you ever talk to a guy or met a guy that has a lot of gay friends? And it's like, oh, that's my homeboy. Oh, that's my homeboy. Oh, that's my homeboy. Like, have y'all ever been in that type of situation or dealt with anybody like that? Well, I'll be honest, I already know your answer because you only deal with DL niggas. But, <laughs> yeah. but I, I, how do you feel about dealing with that? Um, It's a bit jarring, you know? Like, because it, it leaves you the question, because you know, we this is our industry, in that industry. This is our community. This is our life. So we know what this world looked like and what it operates like. So homeboy could mean we fucked before and we found out that we were better off as friends. Homeboy could mean we got a situation shit, but we ain't really trying to talk to talk about it because you know we just homeboys that fuck around when we get horny and smoke together. Like it homeboy can mean a number of things. It could it could be very open-ended, you know. So I just mm, and then with the family situation, I did not mean to crunch up my face, but I just <laughs> It just feels very intrusive to me. Like I just don't know y'all. Like, like I just and nothing against y'all because I know why it was invented and I love the idea of community and just you know nurturing and holding and then sheltering people. But bitch, it's just not my team. It's just I just I don't want to be in nobody. I don't want to be held oh. up. Nothing. Like I just I want to be. Me. So you couldn't date the father of the house. I don't think so. I think, again, another situation where I feel like y'all putting 20 on 10, child. Jace asked the question, could we just date someone like that? Could we be involved with someone like that? Not that he's inviting us to be part of the family or inviting us to hang out with these bitches or whatever, or it's totally cool. Keep that shit separate from me, though. That's your gay family. Those are your friends and shit. That's fine. Also, looking at aesthetic, if your man is into queens, are all of his friends queens or truly homeboys? That's another question I have to ask, too, because <clears throat> if I know you're into me and I'm a queen, your friends may be queens, may be thug trade or whatever the case may be, but nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be other masculine kind of dudes in, in the presence. Well, hold on, YB. No, because people be like, oh, that's my homeboy. They quit to dismiss him. Oh, that's my homeboy. Oh, that's just my homegirl. Like, that's what people say. But in this community, we know a lot of the times that means, oh, that's my homeboy, somebody I fucked. I just haven't told you that. But yeah. we're just I cool. mean, it, Like, that's my friend. Like, we cool. And the reason why I brought up the whole, like, But you family. said gay friends, though, as if it was just some friends, friends type shit. Like, <laughs> assuming that he probably <laughs> fucked them because they are gay. I wasn't being super specific with that. Just like for, uh, just friends in general. Yeah. But what you're I talking mean, about homeboys. Some people don't want to get into all the business immediately like that. If he if they did have a situation ship, it didn't work out in their friends. Again, I also look at okay, you're still a good enough guy to where that person wants to be your friend. So that makes me more intrigued in you because you again going back to good nature. No one wants to fuck around with someone who ain't shit. So the fact that you're still friends with these people in a lot of ways, yes, I probably you could 
be a fuck nigga in some type of way and try to bypass it like you said that okay that's just a friend I don't want to go into it but to ask a nigga to you just said too you didn't want to know everyone that they fucked right right so really why does it why does it matter you know what I'm saying if you don't really want to know that you know what I'm saying like, and again I don't right. want to assume that just because these guys are gay and y'all are friends that y'all don't have something together either but right. if they do it, they are friends could we handle that I That's mean, yeah. Cool. Do your awesome. thing. Okay. Okay. Well, I do want to say that, like, back in the day, I did used to have a problem with guys who had a lot of gay friends because I guess maybe it was my insecurity because I'm automatically thinking... I know, like, my friend circle, like, when people are like, oh, like, that's my homeboy or something, they usually have had sex with them in some capacity. <laughs> so when guys tell me used to tell me that i just go oh i'll be wondering like damn did you fuck this so guy? here another situation just like myself where you're bringing in past traumas into into situations that's not trauma that's just some no why are you reading us in such ways every time i said that you like no i'm just saying though you brought that assumption based off of past experiences so technically that would be a traumatic no that could be somewhat traumatic like okay you know, I wouldn't consider that. I, I think I that based off my experiences dealing with gays and having friend groups of different types of gays. Yes, and those were what? Those were bad experiences, right? Yeah. So if it leaves a mark, wrong, but I'm just saying, I just know I like. And it my, left a it mark. Something, it was something that left the market was traumatic. Yeah. I think when we say trauma, we think of traumatic, but. Sometimes trauma could be just something as simple as the bitch comes in many forms. You steal. So, you know, like every time you around, you steal my money, bitch. So I don't leave my purse around you. That's trauma, bitch. I, you traumatized me, and now I don't trust you around my coin book because you like to stay on. You can have a good experience, but you can't have good trauma. You can have a bad experience, but if it left a mark that you will always remember, that scar is called trauma. Yeah, especially if it was in a negative way. Emotional scars and trauma are pretty much the same thing. Okay, I, I, I give out that. I give out that. But now, at, at my age now, I don't, like I said, I don't want to know who you've had sex with. However, if there's a situation that comes up where this person is trying to build a friendship with me, or, you know what I mean? Like, we're in a social setting and this person is all in my face. You like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I would like to know at that point that yeah I yeah. used to go with him yeah so I'm I'm take you like not trying to him. build a friendship with me if you have a relationship with somebody that you used to have a relationship with like if y'all have a platonic friendship and y'all used to be in a relationship and I know the person is going to be around just let me know I don't want to I want to know too though I don't want to just start that off like I think that conversation comes like after We've established that we are actually going to be an exclusive item. Of course. Like if we're just talking, if we're just kicking the shit, we would have went on a few dates and you done invited me over to the kickback of the so-called ex or whatever. I don't really feel like in that moment I need to know. Whoa. But like if we become Whoa. if we become no. 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 Do not, not invite me to your ex's party and don't tell or me it's some your nigga you used to fuck with. If you invited me to his party, I need to know that. Okay, I got I have a, another question to, to kind of segue off of that. Because I'm sure we all have. Have each of us dated a guy that was for everyone? And can we share like a little quick story? We all have in some way. <clears throat> These niggas ain't shit, like I said earlier, honey. These niggas are for the streets. You be sitting around here thinking these niggas are for you, child, but they really for everybody. <clears throat> Shout out to Cash Doll, bitch, because hello, God, honey. Cause... My second boyfriend, um, he was a for everybody type of nigga. Like, two months into us dating, I remember I was at his apartment with his friends or whatever, and they were just like, if you don't tell him, we will. So he took me outside and we sat on the stairs, and he told me that he assumed that because, because I'm a loner, so if I'm not, I'm not the type to just be all in your face texting you all day, so he, I guess he assumed that because I was distant, that I was doing my thing, so he was doing his. Two, two months in of dating or exclusive dating, like... Exclusive dating, like after after we decided we had been talking 
decided that we wanted to be a couple two months after that is when he told me this and um this was the same nigga i decided to stay i still i forgave myself but still to this day i i sit back and i'm just like why did you stay like you could have just got up from those stairs and left and that would have been it you you would have like gosh all this heartbreak but i ended up staying and that was the same nigga that i was talking about early in the episode that was walking through the club and everybody knew him he was james and everybody knew him and it was so bad that i remember one girl she um she was like hey james and she like literally rubbed her hand on his dick as he passed by and i'm looking at him like I i'm holding your hand like he was like, oh no, no, it's nothing like no, nah, it's nothing like that. That's just my my and that's that family shit. That's my gay wife or something. I'm just like, so is that no respect? Like I just I, I think the Girl, that- let me tell you something. At that point moment in life, y'all know Sonya Blade from Mortal Kombat. I would have did one of her little flip kicks, wrap my legs around that whole neck. Hey, bitch, finish her. Girl, that hoe would have been dragged to the bar in here, too. You just said you're not going to let the whole thing... No, 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 no. That's different. But you're touching my man's dick, bitch. That's disrespectful. I'm fucking both of y'all motherfuckers up. I say rubbed her hand. And see, Wabi, that's why I said, bitch, you're not that type of bitch that's going to let some shit slide and take it back to the house. No, if if you're just like, oh, hey, and it's like a kiss on the cheek real quick, you know the Spanish girls, honey... And it's like, hey, how you doing? A little hug, that's fine. But you grabbed my man's dick, kind of that my man's dick is my dick, bitch. That is an extension of me, girl. And by extension, I'm gonna get the extension cord and wrap it around your motherfucking neck and tie that shit to a horse, bitch. Yeehaw ho. Yeah. Drag you through the wilderness, girl. I don't give a fuck. No, that's disrespectful. It's, it is. Which is why I don't feel bad for flattening her tires and carving a nice note into the side of her car. But hello, I just, yeah, that was my for everybody type of situation. And I just, I vowed that I would never do that again. So that's why I'm real heavy on the vetting process of getting to know a man and trying to figure out who the fuck he is. Oh, I, I have him. one. Go this ahead. actually is with the boy in Atlanta, the three and a half year one. Um, some shit happened. He was staying with his sister girl and he ended up getting kicked out of the house. So he just basically just moved in with me. So in the moving process, I'm a snooper. I don't give a fuck. I'm one of the girls that I go through everything, bitch. I go through every nook and cranny, bitch. I don't give a fuck. I'm one of those people. If you leave me in, in around your shit too long, you my man, I'm going through your stuff, your Wait, wallet, no, your please, pocket. Did he tell us that we wasn't going to have no man because we be snooping on Instagram? No, that's when you're trying to get the man. That's the meat. I was already in a like a relationship situation shit with this boy. Like that was what we were talking about was like getting to know someone like that's just too much in the beginning of that. But when you're established in your situation, girl, your shit is my shit and period. Like so I was helping him get his stuff in and I see this backpack and something the spirit and the spirit always tells me these things. Shout out to the spirit girl. Shout out to Boba. Bitch, I opened up that motherfucking backpack and this bitch had like five cell phones. Five cell phones. And any meeny miny mo catch a motherfucker by the toe. I picked one out and it let me know. <laughs> Hello God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitch, I cut that phone on and I found out in that moment, I had already knew that he was a piece of shit, but I didn't know the extent of his filth. And girl, when I mean, there were so many messages from so many girls and I'm talking about fish, like he's, you know, he's bisexual child. And uh, girl, when I tell you and what helped me a lot, and I told the story before, one of the messages was a recent one where he was trying to meet up with that girl at my house. Two days later, you remember this story, Cat and JC. I remember this. Two days later, I was at work. The spirit said, girl, go home early. I went home early. I parked my car away from where I normally was in my apartment. Bitch, I motherfucking put that key in the door, kicked that motherfucker open, ran back there. Girl, he was fucking this girl down on my goddamn bed. <laughs> fucking that girl down on my bed. What I mean, I beat both of those bitches' ass, girl. 
threw them in the closet, locked them in there, took all their clothes outside, burned them, honey. Then threw th- you was then, not all that. then threw them outside, but naked. Called the police and said, "There's two crackheads out here burning clothes, running around naked." And that was at the height of um, what was that that flock of drug? And the girls in Atlanta were on that shit like white on rice. So it was believable. The police came and got them. They were arrested for like public nudity and uh, burning shit without something. You know that little law if you're burning stuff, it's not a controlled fire or some shit. They got charged with all that shit, y'all. I don't play. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. But yeah, he was a for everybody type of bitch. We had some amazing sex like a week later. It was good though. I've dated two drug dealers in my life. This is the second drug dealer. <laughs> While I was in high school, he went to another high school with my best friend. Shout out to Whitney. I don't care about saying that. She already know this shit. But this dude. Come on, Miss Houston. <laughs> but I literally, we, we had started a brand new school year and I was in a science class. And it was a really fine ass dude in the class. Um, and we kind of locked eyes like the first couple of classes and shit like that. That Friday of the end of the first week, I ended up going out to a gay club and I saw him there. And I had not, cause he was giving me like trade down. And so I saw him at the club and I was like, oh shit, that's the nigga from my science class. It was biology. And I was like, oh shit. So he ended up coming up to me and was like, damn, you in my class, ain't you? Like kind of joking around and shit. So we started talking, we exchanged numbers. The very next day, um, I went over to his, he invited me to his house or to his brother's house where he was at. And they lived literally a mile away from my house. Um, so I go over there, we get to talking and He's like, yeah, I just got out of this relationship with this dude. He goes to this certain high school or whatever. And he drives this type of car. Like, he was giving me all this tea, which is why I don't be spilling tea with any type of bitch nowadays. Like, this was the lesson that I took from that. Spilling all this tea and shit, talking about, uh, you know, the type of car he drives and shit. And as soon as he said the type of car, I was like, thinking in my head, like, fuck, like, this is my nigga. Mm. So... Me being the, I was a senior, I was like seven, I was still 17 at this time. Um, me being the 17 year old that I was, I divulged the information to him. Like, damn, this is the same person I'm fucking with. So we start sharing all these stories. He's like, yeah, he was like, fuck my, uh, he fucked my cousin, which was a female, because he was bisexual. He fucked my cousin that was a female. He fucked, tried to fuck my best friend. Like, literally everybody. And I'm like, okay. And like, I'm like, I'm not letting this shit show because I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to see you. I'm not trying to let you see me sweat. You know what I'm saying? So literally by the time I got home, uh, my phone was ringing when I walked into the door in my bedroom. I had my own person, my own private line. At this. <laughs> my phone was ringing and it was drug dealer. Mm. And when I picked up, this nigga started going the fuck off talking about, why the fuck you bringing my name up and talking, talking, and you were over at this nigga house and like tried to completely flip the script on me. Like I was doing some shit that I wasn't supposed to do. Which I was a little bit. But nigga, you been fucking everybody. So, him and I end up stop talking after that or whatever. A little bit. But <laughs> but he had that he had that coin. So. <laughs> so, I was there for it. But come to find out, like, years later, he tried to fuck my best friend, Whitney. Like I said, he went to school with her. He was trying to fuck her in school knowing that that was my best friend. He's fucked about three or four people that I know that I'm I'm cool with. I wanna say they're my friends, but like this nigga was literally fucking everything. And I had no fucking idea. 